Welcome back to the desk here at the 2024 Mackinac Policy Conference. I am joined now by Dan Lepp, President and CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield. Great to have you back here. Zoe, it's always a pleasure. And Trisha Keith, President and CEO elect of Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's great to welcome you here to the desk. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. So I say elect, Dan, because this is your last year. It is. Talk to me about what it's been like reflecting at this time. Well, you know, I was fortunate enough. I became CEO of the Blues in 06 and uh, Dick Blouse sort of took me, uh, who was the previous um, head of the chamber before Sandy, took me under his wing. I chaired this conference in 07. You did. And was the chair of the, of the board in 08. And early on, it gave me a chance to really meet a lot of people because of that position that you would not have met. Now we do a lot of business with everybody too, including the, the chamber, but Dick was, was good to me and it's been a great experience. We've had a long time relationship with the chamber and this event's getting better and better. Uh, and you can tell this year. So it's sort of, you know, it's bittersweet, but it's mostly sweet. You know, you gotta know when it's time um, to go. And I had a great run. We did a lot of great things, and Trish is going to do a great job um, as my successor. So Trish, you've been at Blue Cross since 06. I have. And so you have seen just monumental and huge changes. What is your focus now in 2024? Well, I think, I, first of all, I'm honored to be here, and thank you. And it's been such a privilege to work, uh, you know, work for Dan over these years and have learned so much. But the legacy that he's built around the mutualization, around the diversification that we have that's created the strong enterprise that we have, I'm really looking forward to what's to come in this transition as we move forward. We are relentless in our focus to service our members. We have a strong enterprise on which to build and continue the diversification. Um, but honestly, a lot of it, I'm working with our employees right now in a listening tour to really listen and understand and hear from them too about their ideas about how to move the company forward. I'm curious about what you see as your role, and by your, really, I mean Blue Cross Blue Shield's role in the state of Michigan. Well, we think we're we think we're at the center of what happens in Michigan and in taking care of our members. And we want to be integral in their lives around security, around affordability, around their experience, around their whole health. And the economic impact that we have as a company to drive that, you know, Dan's leadership that we had around the core cities where we invested and, and uh, centered our employees in the core cities of Michigan has really made such an amazing impact. And, you know, as the Michigan's economy goes, we're so vested in that. As Michigan's economy goes, so go we because of our critical role there. And so uh, we're integral in what happens in Michigan. Dan, what are the biggest challenges facing your colleague, your, your president-elect here? What, what I've seen over the years is the speed of everything. When you start in 06 mm. and then you go in, in three to five year increments, it was fast. It is so fastly changing. When you look at the biggest payout now for us is in pharmacy. And there are great strides going on in, in drugs, but there's a huge economic impact that we, collectively, not only us in, in the business, but government and the private sector haven't figured out what we're gonna do. Because for example, you talk about GLP, the one drugs, the, the weight loss, and. A A1C drugs. You keep hearing about Ozempic being, right. what, $6,000? Yeah, yeah, it's 1200 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And so how do you fit that in? But then you take the step further into uh, cell and gene therapies where there are going to be in the next two or three years, one shot will cure you, but that one shot may cost $400,000. Well, how does that fit in the whole ecosystem of healthcare for everybody, for the, for the payers, for the buyers, and, you know, from... Um, from a society standpoint, what are we going to do? You see this opportunity, can you afford to pay for it? And if you can't afford to pay for it and you don't do it, there's a whole, you know, discussion about that. So I think, um, you know, pharma is a huge issue, but people, the one thing we've done well in the whole 85 years, the blues have been around. And I, I just talked to Mark Hackle and he said, he said, I worked for the county for 44 years. I got a Blue Cross card, they tried to change, they didn't, we got it, I never want to give it up. And that really threw the auto industry a lot, where people are very secure 
with what we do. And that's our job is to is to keep doing the right thing so people are secure. Well, to add in on that though, Trisha, you recently said, quote, there are powerful forces of change impacting healthcare at this moment. Mm -hmm. I, I'm hearing what Dan is That's saying. Right. Is that sort of how you're feeling about it? A absolutely, and I, I think what's happening here at the conference, you know, our theme is building bridges. Actually, I think that it's a great title and metaphor for what we need to do um, it, it, with our upcoming health challenges as well, and how we can work together with public policy makers um, to tackle a lot of the challenges that Dan just referenced. Yeah, and and as you say, Dan, bringing equity and equality into all of that. Yes, and, and that's absolutely that everybody has the same opportunities. And, I, you know, nobody's going to fix this. Not one sector is going to fix this. This has to be a team effort because the end game, if we do it right, will benefit everyone. Yeah. So, Dan, as I mentioned, this is your last conference as president and CEO. Um, the past years you've sat down since Governor Whitmer has been governor in these sort of fireside chats right. with the governor. Um, you, as you said, have chaired the conference. I'm curious about what you see as this conference's role in the future of Michigan going forward. It is, uh, it's multifaceted. But the biggest thing is they are, Sandy has done a great job of making this conference even a bigger convener of ideas and people. And it's the one I remember when I was deeply involved as a leader in the chamber, this theory of, well, we shouldn't go to Mackinac Island, we should keep it in Detroit. I was vehemently opposed to that because what this island does for two days is you are a prisoner which means it forces all of us, in a good way, it's not so bad, is it? But in a good way, to be with each other and to talk. There's really no, think of anywhere else, uh, 365, where you can do that with all these people that are decision makers and that can make a difference in making Michigan better. That's how that works. They're conveners and they wanna be problem solvers. And I think Sandy has done a great job. And the longer they keep it here so we can keep doing that, the better. Well, Trisha, congratulations. Thank you. I want to just quickly ask, what's the first task ahead on January 1 for you? Um, well, rolling out a lot of what I hear right now and making sure that we are true to our mission that we've had for 85 years of being our member's trusted advisor and delivering that with, uh, with innovative products with our provider partners for our members. Trisha Keith, Dan Lepp, Blue Cross Blue Shield, thanks so much for the time. Thanks, Thank you.